Hi guys, this is Frenchie and I'm so, so, so excited about the DaVinci Resolve 19 update. It's insane what they have done. There are so many new cool features and I'm so excited to actually like include them in my workflow. It feels like it was Christmas. Also, I saw the new micro panel announced and I am sorry, uh, old micro panel, but I think I'm gonna go to this new micro panel because it's so good. Having your micro panel that could control your power windows, it was my dream, my wet dream. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm super excited. Um, I'm also a bit sad because the resale value of my old micro panel has just dropped. But that's not the subject. Here are my favorite features in DaVinci Resolve 19. Okay, so guys, DaVinci Resolve 19 has a lot of updates and I'm super excited about it. Um, for me, there is a lot of features that I love, but there's few features that are actually game changer in my workflow. The first one is the star of DaVinci Resolve 19, which is actually the color splice. Splice? The color slice, sorry. So the color slice is actually the separation of seven color vectors to uh, red skin, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. Uh, to control in the image so actually it's like uh, having a color wrapper the color wrapper was amazing already because you could, could control the hue and the saturation at the same time and uh, the color splice come like to uh, complement it by controlling the density and the saturation uh, at the same time and the saturation in this color slice is actually subtractive which is very interesting so let's uh, jump into this tool and see what we can do with this tool. So this tool is um, pretty intuitive. You have uh, your seven vectors over here and uh, like the HDR wheels, you can preview your selection by clicking the highlight tool next to the name over here. What is interesting in this color slice is that you have a vector that is called skin. But technically, uh, this vector is the orange vector where normally the skin is sitting. Uh, so what is great is that it already knows where to look for the skin and uh, will give you a selection of the skin. I said it for so many times that you don't need to qualify your skin, but now you have less and less excuse to qualify your skin, guys. <laughs> so in each column, you know, like you have a uh, center. Center is useful to refine the range of what uh, DaVinci Resolve is taking in the vector. U is actually changing the color of the vector that you selected. Density is to bring down some brightness out of your color. And saturation, this saturation is subtractive. That means that it will have an HSV effect like we were doing before. Uh, you know, when we were going to a color space that was the HSV color space and we were altering the saturation in this color space, it was adding a lot of colors without making the color brighter. This is very interesting for us and uh, that can work super well in the complement of a color wrapper. Let's just play with our skin. So here I want to have, uh, for example, a skin that has a bit more character. I choose to have a skin that is denser. So if you see, if I go up and I go towards one, my skin is denser than before. And if I go towards minus one, my skin is brighter than before. So I'm just gonna go to something like uh, 0 0.35. You can see already that it does something. And uh, I'm just gonna saturate a tiny bit more the skin. And if you see when I saturate, it doesn't add brightness. So I can go towards two to uh, zero. So I'm just gonna go to uh, 133. And I think at 133, I'm happy with that. I find that my subject is too orange so I can go to my hue and I can slide to towards magenta-ish. So I'm just going to go towards magenta and after when I'm done you can see so this was before this is after. So now I have real rich colors going on. Um, I can see in my image that there is a lot of cyan and the cyan is very primordial in the background so what I want to do is actually making my character pop out uh, next to this background. So what I can do is just like taking my cyan 
over here and actually making it denser so then my character is popping up uh, also I see that the skin is a bit too dense so I'm just gonna go back with my skin and go to actually something like uh, 0 0.15 you know uh, so then like I went super dense in cyan and uh, I can go a tiny bit more uh, with my saturation because I find that it gives life to the background uh, where actually you could have a complete different image just with us moving the color slice. Well, I wanted to show you actually what the refine range can do with this cyan. Uh, if, for example, I go towards uh, one with uh, this center, uh, I can see that it will take the reflection that I have in the glass uh, in the background and make this uh, break, you know, in my color. Something that actually I want to avoid. And if I go towards minus one, I don't have it uh, happening anymore. So this tool is pretty useful actually to refine your range and maybe clean up some uh, break that you can have in your color uh, after your modification. You have also this line uh, upper all the tools uh, where you have the global density and the depth of it, the saturation, the balance of it and the depth and the hue. Uh, so the global density is like if you'd play with it, then like you play with the overall density. If I go to minus one, there's less density. If I go to uh, one, there's more density, for example. And uh, with the depth of it, so the depth of it is like you are closer to zero, then uh, the depth of your density is heavier. You are closer to one or minus one, then it's lower, so it's kind of like a, a blend tool. So that's all for Color Slice, and Color Slice is gonna be amazing for my workflow because I'm gonna use it for my skin or for my colors in my environment coupled with my color wrapper. Let's go to the second feature that I really like, and uh, for me it's the Film Look Creator that uh, DaVinci Resolve just came out with. So uh, you can find it in the OFX. And uh, when I drop it, I have a preset of few formats of film. So 65 millimeter, 35, uh, cinematic bridge bypass. So the main difference that we have uh, between an external plugin like Dehancer and this OFX is that Dehancer plugin is giving you some film stock emulation where you can choose based on a film stock emulation. Whereas this film look creator is full customable look. Here, then uh, I'm just gonna keep 65. But if you if you want to be adventurous, you can uh, check all the uh, preset. Here in color settings, we can affect our image in a photometric way, which is interesting. Okay, classic highlights fade. Fade is like to uh, mute your blacks. White balance could be nice also, it's quite lovely. What else? Uh, you have tint, skin bias, subtractive saturation, uh, richness is actually density and uh, bleach bypass if you want to do a bleach bypass. The, what is the most interesting in this film look creator is actually the split tone. Uh, you know that I love, I love making split tones, I love uh, creating split tones and here actually we have a feature where I can create spin tones. So let's see actually what it does on the gradient. So I'm just going to copy and paste what I've done. So let's just look at our graph and see what it does. If I put amount, it will be the amount to uh, separate our curves. The hue angle, it will be actually just changing between our uh, red, green and blue. And our pivot, it will be to change where the split is happening. On an image, you can just go and feel it. See, like when I move my amount, right now my image was very yellow. Now it, it becomes a tiny bit more magenta and I can move my hues if I want to have a complete different look and I can move my pivot to control my split tone. Vignette. It's just a vignette by default. Bloom is actually just uh, having highlights that are a bit soft. If you are familiar with 
Dehancer. This bloom I find is way more natural than the Dehancer plugin, but I also really like the Dehancer bloom because the Dehancer bloom really bring a look to the image. So uh, it really depends on the look that you want to imply to your footage. And after we have the grain, flicker is actually just uh, to have the flicker as um, your image was projected uh, like a film. Git wave is having a tiny shake of the camera and uh, you can have film gate and film gate is pretty interesting because you have a different aspect ratio. Uh, now I want to show you the face refinement because the face refinement is something like super crazy guys. It's insane. So uh, I go to my OFX and I just like put face refinement. I drop the face refinement. I'm just gonna detect the face. So I'm just gonna click the face and uh, I'm gonna uh, track the face. And you have the face that is tracked. And one is really cool. <laughs> It's like if, for example, um, your face refinement didn't track well your character, you can just like say, hey, guy, it's not tracked well. So you can just move your mask and just like say to uh, DaVinci Resolve, hey, bro, just fix my mask like this. <laughs> so it's nice. I, I, I'm really excited about this. And they change a lot of stuff. They changed so many stuff, I, I really love it. So uh, let's remove the overlay and just see uh, the character. So of course you have the same as uh, Beauty Advanced, Beauty Automatic as it was. Skin grading didn't change, but now you have side lighting. This is freaking cool. <laughs> so for example, I want to uh, create a bit more depth on her face and have a tiny bit more uh, contrast. I can do that. See, this is left lift. Then you can play with all this. And now we have so many features on eyeshadows. You know, before there was no eyeshadow on face refinement. And now you can, like, you can just put makeup on your talent. It's, <laughs> it's so funny, you know, like, I can put makeup on her. Look at this. It's so cool. She wasn't having any eyeshadows, now she has. And it looks fine. Yeah, it looks fine. So cool. And of course, like you have uh, your eyes. Also, the lips have way more features than before. And you have features for the teeth, which is so cool. <laughs> because like, I have so many times where a client was there and told me like, oh, his teeth are really yellow can you fix it and all the power windows you need to do when he's smiling and you know this kind of stuff it's such a nightmare that this tool will really help me in my work so i'm very excited about this so uh, yeah this is also a huge 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 feature for me that uh, will change my workflow so much and the last one the last one maybe actually my favorite one <laughs> because it's gonna save my ass so much it's the ultra noise reduction i'm just gonna show you this image so this image has a lot of noise for example i brought it up because it was a shot this way i brought it up with my offset to something that is actually uh, normal uh, in terms of uh, brightness but you see, it creates me a lot of noise because i brought the image up so what i'm gonna do is create a noise reduction node before and go to my noise reduction and in my special uh, noise reduction in mode I'm going to select ultra noise reduction so in ultra noise reduction I'm going to actually use the AI to help me to optimally put a noise reduction on my footage so I'm going to analyze the footage and the AI already put a point of reference of where it will analyze the footage. If I want to change it, I can say like, okay, here, over here, this is where uh, I want you to analyze because there is more, there is more noise. So maybe I'm going to uh, leave it as it is over there. And so when I analyze it, this is before. So I can see a lot of noise. I don't know if you're going to see it in uh, YouTube, but this is after and 
all the noise disappeared and it's pretty cool because it's actually very natural i was scared that like it would be too much i can see still like some flickering because of the denoise but i'm i am super satisfied with it if for example you are not satisfied with what the ai did you can still change the luma and you can still change the chroma that's all for me guys i was really excited to make this video because it's such a game changer and i am amazed i am amazed let me know what do you think about this new davinci resolve 19 and i see you next time see you guys